right, the last video we kind of just went through the basics of how to use all this test equipment from Siegecraft on the workbench. And now um, we'll talk about the two repairs that I had to do. One was to this board set, and then one was to another board set. But on this one, we're still in in uh, switch test mode. But if we just hold this down and crank it till 50, we'll get back to attract mode. So yeah, we're back in attract mode. But um, on this MPU, this is one that I planned on keeping. So I went through and replaced all the headers. These had the round pins, which aren't good for flat female connectors. You'd want flat male connectors on there. So I went and redid that. And then the power filter cap up there as well and then I changed out the male side of the 40 pin connector and then this particular driver board um, I would normally rebuild it as well but it has the original connectors on it original 27 ohm resistors there as well but this one it works it fully works now we'll talk about what was wrong with it but it kind of has this weird corrosion black kind of plague on it so and then the back side has some questionable repairs too so it's not in great cosmetic shape it still works, so I'm going to keep it as a spare, but I probably wouldn't rebuild it in hopes of using it someday. I'll probably rebuild it only if I have to kind of thing. But um, I know that this driver board came out of a game that was literally in a barn. So that this isn't like battery corrosion that, that dripped down. This is just like really weird like moisture corrosion. And it's not causing an issue. It just I don't know if it would eventually be an issue somewhere down the road because it's kind of kind of everywhere. It's a little bit on the back side too. But um, this MPU was working fine. These are Jungle Lord ROMs. And the only problem that I had with this setup, and, and this is still the original female side of the 40 pin, because I wasn't going to rebuild that. That's kind of a spending connector now nowadays. But um, this driver board had a problem with its switch matrix. And you can kind of see that someone at some point had trouble with those. And then, because these aren't normally socketed, and this normally isn't socketed as well. But in the switch test mode, the switches for, uh, it was 2, 10, 18, 26, 34, 42, and 50. And if you can recall all those numbers, they're all off by 8, which means that either a row or a column is stuck on. And in this case, it was row 2 was stuck on. So then that goes through these two chips, but it also goes through the PIA. And this PIA was already socketed, so someone had changed that at some point in time. But there was a 6821 made by AMI that was installed, and that brand is notorious for just having chips fail randomly. So I just swapped out that PIA, and then my, my second row became unstuck, and then it started working. So if you're having switch problems, especially things stuck on, these are kind of the, I think these two do the rows, these do the columns, but then they all come off of this. And then after that, this driver board is working. Now, the other set that I was testing, um, I, I wasn't doing it on the bench because this one was running on the bench. Um, I put it in my laser queue, a System 7 game. And I rebuilt that MPU with, with headers, new 40-pin connector, power, power filter cap. And then I also did the same treatment to the driver board, new headers all the way around, which takes a little while. And then I also replaced the female side of the 40-pin connector. And that was working beautifully for about three hours, and then it would randomly lock up. And then I let it cool down, and um, when I saw it locked up, it had uh, gibberish on this. It, it wasn't an actual number giving an error code. It was, it was like a U almost, or an L. So I let it kind of cool down for a bit, then I came back and hit the, the test switch. And again, on a good working MPU, it should flash a zero as well as the two LEDs, and then go blank. And that means everything's working. But when I did this, I got an error code of, I have to remember now, I think it was three right away. So three right away points to the second um, game ROM, or this flipper ROM. These are the weird flipper ROMs that that um, Williams use, and then these two are the actual game ROMs. So I think uh, code three points to this. And I had a, a spare working one in my normal board that I run in laser queue, so I swapped that out. And then when I reran the test... It didn't give me a three this time, it gave me a six. And then on the little cheat code or, or cheat graph, that means that ROM game ROM two is bad. And again, I had a working one, so I just swapped that out. And then when I did this again, it went back to telling me that ROM two was bad. So it kept giving me either a three or a six, and it was kind of just being weird and random. And then I noticed that the 
CPU processor, the 6802, this one happens to be an, an 08, but the 6802 on that other board set was a brand, and I bet you can guess where I'm going with this, AMI. And so that CPU AMI brand had failed, and I just swapped in a working one, and then my diagnostic test came right back. So I had a, a pretty, besides having to change everything out, had a couple of pretty easy repairs just knowing that that AMI brand of IC is always suspect. That f This first board set had a bad AMI PIA, and that second board set had a bad AMI CPU. Well, now I have two spare working sets of drivers and MPUs for System 7. So hopefully you found this video helpful, and good luck in your repairs.